choices all up to you too, too many things don't know what to do Speak your mind and you won't get judged If, if it kicks off you won't hold no grudges What? Come online, come online, come online. CSI, CSI C Come online, come online CSI, CSI yeah. Welcome to another episode on CSI again Today we have a guest with us here called Tunde I would like him to actually introduce himself to you guys, okay? Hi, how you doing guys? Uh, my name is Tunde is as most of everyone will probably know. Uh, I'm actually a sales and digital marketing executive. Uh, basically, I've been uh, in Ireland for as long as I can remember, probably half, more, more than half my life. And um, yeah, I've worked with different different groups of people, different cohorts uh, from the youths in our community to even the police to try to work on um, issues ranging around um, diversity, inclusion, and integration within Ireland. So uh, today, I'm just here to talk about some of the common issues that we, we kind of have within the country and information that I've garnered during my experience that I would love to pass on to other people as well. So uh, yeah, that's that's me there. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for you know taking the opportunity to actually come on come on board here to actually you know share your knowledge share your research your information yeah. that you know that can actually be helpful to our youth as well Definitely. you know because we're the leaders of tomorrow our our youth as well are also the leaders of oh, tomorrow, tomorrow yeah. so can we say we're the leaders of today because we want to show them the way we see things that are going wrong in our society yeah. so that's why mm. we decide you know what if we don't talk about it how can they even know something is wrong there you know True. So the topic we're here to talk about today is in relation to racism and... Um, yeah, so as you said yourself there, uh, we are the leaders of tomorrow and today, but mostly they're the leaders of tomorrow. Correct. We're the mentors of today mm -hmm. that will kind of transfer the knowledge that we've gained okay. so that it will help them to mm -hmm. proceed better in, in the future. Correct. Um, today, yeah, I mean, one of the topics we're going to discuss is racism in Ireland. In Ireland. Now, uh, racism in Ireland, the discussion you generally think is a two-way interaction whereby you've got uh, the Africans and then the native Irish people. Um, however, uh, for my segments, I just felt it was better to kind of um, put one one of the groups to the side and okay. focus on, on ourselves, you know. Ourselves, yeah. We've spent a lot of years working on um, having conversations, a two-way conversation, but I think if we spend time talking about our issues ourselves... Looking and deep into ourselves. Deep into ourselves, like I said, and mm -hmm. um, we'll be able to recognize when we see these things presented to ourselves and we'll be able to handle it better. Because we, what we've been doing for a long time is having these two-way discussions without having discussions with ourselves that are frank and just passing information that will kind of help us. Yeah, and in the past, it's just never, actually never helped us or get anywhere with it. Uh, I mean, look where we are. Yeah. We're, we're still talking about this. We're so, still talking uh, about this. Nothing has really it's, changed. It's, so if we can educate our own youth to actually handle this in a yeah. different way and be more mature about different yeah. things or different angles as well, basically, I think it might be different. Yeah, yeah. so that would be great. Like, you know, if you can share your knowledge of your new way or your own way of actually mm -hmm. looking at things you know or your your perspective in a way so if you'd like to share that with us um yeah so basically just in terms of racism the way we've been handling it uh since since day is either you've been trying to hide under a rock or different things or just if you don't know your history or if you don't know certain history you're not going to be able to deal with it when it presents itself to yourself you know, um, and one of the things that I feel that people do not actually have a clue about is the four systems of oppression, which is the roots uh, underneath uh, racism, you know. Mm -hmm. And when I talk about the four systems of oppression, um, they would be ideological oppression, uh, mm -hmm. number two, institutional oppression, and then you've got interpersonal oppression, and then internalized oppression. Yes, it might be some. Have you, have you ever heard of those? No. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. So, um, same as me. This, this is why I'm here today. Um, I, I didn't know about these before until I put myself into these uncomfortable situations. If I'm having conversations with native Irish people, uh, or just in my own personal time, and or dealing with young people from our community and seeing how they're actually affected mentally. Um, mm. So, when you understand these principles. Believe me, you'll be able to sit down, handle certain situations when it plays out to yourself. 
because yeah. you know where it's coming from and you know how to deal with it and you know how to move forward with it. Oh wow, that's really, really very interesting in a way. I would like to actually know more about this. If you'd like to even go into a little bit in-depth details about this, I'm sure everybody would like to learn from this as well, you know? Yes. We all educate each other and the way you've come up here with your topic today and the examples that you've given there, I've actually never thought of it in that way or look at it from a different angle or in that yeah. direction before. So I would love to learn um yeah i'm happy you're, you're open to learning yeah, and uh, i'll try to give you as much information as possible but the the research work that needs to be done is, is on your hand i can only give you the surface um of information that i can possibly do within this short, short space of time mm -hmm. uh you guys will have to go out yourself and just continue and further on the the, the research yeah. so uh, ideological oppression which is the first system of oppression um it just basically says the oppressing group holds within its core the idea about itself that it has the rights to control uh, the other group because they are better and more superior than them. So just take 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 a bit of time and think about what I just said there. Um, this is how oppressors think. This is how they operate, and this is why racism is thriving right now. Mm -hmm. And let's not let's let's get this straight. Um, oppression is not only down to racism, etc. You'll see this in different social classes, even from Nigeria where. I'm from Nigeria. I know it's from Nigeria because I speak the same language. Yeah. Uh, oppression, like um, the oppressing group do not want equality because equality is oppression for them as well. So think about rich people. They don't want to, they don't want equality because if there's equality, the poor people will be on the same line and they wouldn't get the same benefits like slaves in the house, mm -hmm. cleaning the house, drivers driving the, the cars for them, people cleaning the toilets in the supermarkets and the what. You get the idea, really. I totally get the idea. So yeah. they hold this 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 idea, the ideology that within their core that they are better and they must be in control over the other group. And um, yeah, they see themselves as more advanced, more noble, stronger, capable, intelligence chosen. And uh, they see the other group, let's not say ourselves, but they see the other group as inferior. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, when you, when when we talk about inferior kind of uh mentality you talk about they see us as abnormal less deserving weak incompetent lazy backwards worthless easy so wow. first we need to understand how they think this is how they think mm. so when you have that in your head then you're not you able to go to, to the next stage, stage. Next does that stage, make yeah. any sense it here? totally makes sense indeed because yeah. indeed you're right like who would want to be here i mean mm. they think that you're down here yeah. with your color or whatever the case may be that you're yeah. down there for you to work so hard and get up to their level, you're mm. oppressing them already. Of course. You know, you're, they don't want you to be on the same level with Never. them. They don't want you to earn the same pay as them. So they prefer to actually have you as maybe that slave, like you said, yeah. you know, housekeeper, driver, True. or car washer, or this and that. True. That's where they want you to be. They True. got it. True. But when we're growing to be on the same level as them, it's oppressing them. So I totally agree with you on that, being oppressed and so understanding what oppression is yeah. in terms of you know in the racism background and stuff mm. like that so thank you for sharing that actually yes um and uh, just to add to that as well which is a great point you know and you will see many times uh, people from the oppressing group mm. shown that they want to help well what, what it is is just think of a donkey with carrots you know <laughs> hanging in front of it and you're literally trying to get the carrots but as you're moving the carrots is moving it's never going to work that's why we're getting free aid to africa uh you know you know yourself the the, the saying uh, feed a man and i forgot what it says but you, you know what i'm trying to say <laughs> but teach him how to fish and he will be so self-sustaining and uh that's that's basically what it is there mm. moving on to the next one institutional yep. oppression uh what this is it just means that the oppressing group believes within their core theories about the rights to control the other group so much to the point that they enforce and embed this systematically into institutions of society from top right down to the bottom so you and i we've gone through it probably every single day we just don't know that this is institutional oppression uh so when i say from top to bottom we're talking about through the laws political power the legal systems mm -hmm. defenders of the laws police on guard is your corner mm. um media images educational system schools hiring policies that's hr in companies etc uh housing developments and so on so in, in other terms institutional oppression is always intentional just remember that it is very very intentional so when you meet the judge and you you, you experience certain things it is intentional 
you don't get the job or you go to HR, you feel some type of way, it's intentional, if that makes sense to you. It totally makes sense. And I totally agree with you on this part as well, because I believe every single one of us have experienced this at one stage of in course. our life. You know, when you talk about institutional racism as well, there was an article I read there a couple of weeks ago as well in regards to the housing, for example, oh, yeah. the housing system in Ireland, you know. Like, you know, I think this has to do with the, with the social counseling, um, social housing, rather, yeah, how you know, and stuff like that. I don't know how true this might be or if you would agree with me on this as well that like you said people at the top right they purposely purposely segregated you know where they actually give black people housing 100 percent, 100 percent. yeah like if you look at an area in tala for example i forgot the name of that area in tala um mac william mac william for example <laughs> you know we call that like the black neighborhood yeah, yeah, because yeah. you know it's like the social council that they purposely just throw all the blacks in one area terrorist because town. They, in terrorist town as well ball brigham now that they call black brigham yeah, yeah. and the, you know the the locals in ball brigham even the irish locals in ball brigham are terrified because they see a bunch of black people and they have they automatically have something in their head oh, yeah, 100%. and the way they look at them and the way they treat it, yeah. treat them as well it's like they sometimes i believe they look at black people as disease or disgrace or gut or something dirty and stuff like that ideological you know? oppression ideological oppression there you, go. you know there so you when go. you talk about the institutional one there i just mm. found it like very very amazing because i've experienced this at work mm. i left my last job literally because of this because i could not stand it anymore 100 anymore i could not stand it i worked there for 10 years yeah. and i could not grow simply because of the color of my skin can i ask you one question yeah go on did it affect you mentally oh <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> Yeah, Dude, yeah, yeah. I would tell you one thing today. This is one of the reasons why I am sitting here today. There you because go. I want a change. There you go. I could not fight the change in work. Even the same people in the HR department in this work, every single person in the HR department are all white. Mm. So when I raised three different locations, I raised a problem in work. Something to do with the color of my skin. Of course. Being racially mm. abused and intimidated but all of these people in the department do not even know how to handle it yeah and this is where it's even more frustrating because i'm there like you're not black one mm. you've never lived in any foreign country yeah, so yeah. how would you in a million years understand how i Yo, feel yeah. or how to even handle this situation yeah. so that's where we lack i don't even know how to say we lack improvement in most organizations professional organizations like you know so i'm glad you're bringing this up because I don't know how we can somehow improve or find a change. Yeah, um, I mean, that's that's where we'll get to because mm -hmm. for a lot of times we've been looking towards the oppressors mm. to make a change. So when it, when, it, when you look back at this and listen to what I said, you're looking to your oppressors to make a change, to make things better for you. <laughs> Will your oppressors want equality? Like I've said, no, they wouldn't. <laughs> where does change have to come from? From yourself. How do you change uh, certain things that's going on in your life? Going to the root cause issues, okay. understanding certain things. Because if you don't understand, you're, you're not even going to know where to go to next. Yeah. Um, it's, it's part of the art of war, if that makes sense. Yourself. Makes sense yeah. Yes. Um, so um, still in this uh, institutional oppression, one out of every four African-American uh, is currently in jail, on parole, on probation. This is institutional racism. Um, and then when we bring it to Ireland here, you've got the direct provision system. That's a system of oppression, if, if, if you don't know, just wrapped around uh, goodwill. Uh, and uh, yeah, these are dehumanizing practices and uh, we must eradicate these 50. So going to the third oppression, interpersonal oppression. You know what that is? No. <laughs> interpersonal oppression? Interpersonal oppression. Wow. Yeah, okay. look, listen, uh, I was the same as you when I was looking up all these things. Well, as I was getting this information, it just made me feel liberated and uh, very, very happy too. Even I tried to be black, even though I'm happy already. <laughs> yeah. uh, the structuring of these ideologies believe that the oppressor is superior than the other institutions, as we have seen above, gives permission and uh, reinforcements for individuals which are common members of society uh, to personally disrespect and mistreat individuals in the oppressed group. So it's personal oppression. They feel that they hold this great view about themselves. They've embedded it into systems mm -hmm. uh, through the law. So this kind of gives them permission to actually dehumanize those who they are oppressing. 
Oh, wow. So again, when we look at the likes of the uh, Palestine, Israeli, uh, I don't know if we should talk about this here. If if talk about Israel, will <laughs> if, they, if they will come come to, come to, come to your stuff. Nah. But we'll, we'll go away from that. We'll go away from that. Thank you. Um, but with 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 this here, um, when you see people call you black this, black that, this is that and that on the streets, just making you feel aggravated, angered, it's because they feel they have the right to do this to yourself. And uh, this is what the oppressor does uh, up close to the oppressed people, like racism that you experience, you know, the racist jokes, the threats, microaggression in work, the stereotypes, violence, beatings, harassments, belittling, Karens and Kevins. This is what gives them the, the, power. The, the power to actually do these things to you, even though they're And the college. reality is that the people that actually surround them, either if it's bullying in college or in schools and stuff mm. like that, if we're not taking drastic action, and actually taking the importance of racism and stuff like this. I don't mm. think when anything is even going to change. And mm. I'm glad that you came here to actually, you know, teach us in a way of how we can actually look at ourselves to look for a change or yep. so. Like from the examples you've been giving, Karen and whatever the case may be, even from let's say somebody being bullied in school mm. or college. Yeah. I ultimately believe that the oppressor should be expelled mm. from that college. Simple as that. Of course. That's to teach other students or other youths mm. that education that this is absolutely wrong. Consequences. Like consequences, yeah. you know, for all your actions. Yeah, so basically it's quite normal for the oppressing group to, um, <clears throat> uh, con to not even be consciously aware of their oppressive activities. Okay. That's why you hear a lot of them say, uh, uh, I don't see racism, I don't see race. Just to diminish and minimize what it's saying mm -hmm. and of course they haven't experienced it themselves so when these kind of things understand? they can never understand yeah. uh because it's natural to them they already feel that they are up here while you you're not even down here you're below below there and the most important thing is that they're actually very ignorant about how they say it as well oh, yeah. and they're they're more oppressed when people like you and i are mm. actually trying to raise awareness about oh, this yeah. as well it's like i don't see racism i've never experienced this I, i'm not racist and stuff mm. like that but the thing is in your everyday mm. life you're close to somebody that is being racist or that has that you know tendency of being racist oh, yeah. themselves but how can we fix this? If you are being ignorant and not actually educating them or stopping them or mm. not accepting what you feel that mm. is not acceptable, not accepting it, then you are part of it yeah. as well. By but, saying, well, I don't experience it. I, I don't do it. I, I am not racist and true. stuff like that, you know? 100%. And um, just again, we, we're not here to educate uh, the Caucasian group uh, as to what their behavior needs to be. If, if they need to be educated, then that's their issue. Correct. They know what to do. They know what's going on. They see it every day, and they are very, very well aware of it. Aware of it. So that's not our that's not our issue at all. Our yes, issue exactly. should be literally focused from where it was before and moved all the way to ourselves, and start to pass on this information, transfer this knowledge within ourselves. Yeah, uh, because we have a lot of mental uh, problems that we have to deal with, fix, and by having these conversations with ourselves is mm -hmm. how we're gonna literally help ourselves. I'm not even be, be, be worried about what the other group thinks about. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, at all. Zero. True. And we go on to the next one, Dave. Yes. Uh, just before we finish this one, there, just the final topic. Um, they have internalized the negative messages about the other groups that they consider their attitudes towards other group quite normal, especially when backed up by institutional and sy systematic and systemic arrangements. Okay. Even when you present these facts to them, um, one of the very, very fascinating things that happens is cognitive dissonance uh, kicks in because it just goes against their core beliefs. Mm. You tell them that this is what's going on, this is this. They don't want to know. Cognitive dissonance would literally come out and they'd be like, nope. And they start fighting against you because it's just not what they believe. What they believe is something different. Totally. You're trying yeah. to get them out of their comfort zone. Oh, yeah. Things like this you would make yeah, them you know. very, very uncomfortable. Yeah. So when I don't understand is that when people feel uncomfortable mm. about some certain things that they, they have no idea of mm. or they've never mm -hmm. experienced in life, why is it so difficult to actually show interest in actually wanting to learn? Um, you see, it's not only with this topic as well. Like cognitive dissonance, it, it, it spills into a whole different range of topics. Mm -hmm. Like I'll use one, for example, now religion. I'm not very religious, so it's going to be a little bit of a touchy one for some people. Yeah. But I just want to give you an example of how it works. So right. from my from my points, when I'm talking to someone that's very religious mm -hmm. and I give them facts of why Christianity and all these things are not let me be careful because i don't respect people's religions but uh, when i give you facts against religion you start to become defensive you know 
Mm. So when you become defensive, it's because it goes against your core belief. This is what you've grown up thinking, believing, mm -hmm. what you've known all your life, what your parents have taught you. Mm -hmm. So when you get these facts, even though they are facts, mm -hmm. and we know facts are facts, not fiction, mm -hmm. you just it, there's there's like a chemical imbalance in your head <laughs> that causes chaos. And it's that true. chaos doesn't want you to accept and it just goes against the grain. So you challenge whoever you're with. But we need to understand that uh, all you need to do is you need to plant a seed. Your, your duty is not to get them to understand where you're trying to, the point you're trying to make. You're just planting a seed because the mind is going to go into itself and do its own job and eat itself and start to have the conversation within itself. Correct. And that's how you deal with that. This is a very, very, very perfect example that you just <laughs> Wow. You know, it is very, very impressive. Yeah. You know, that's a very, very good example there because you're absolutely right about this. And if someone can actually take this example that you've given there and actually look at their children as well, in a way, say, okay, let me start teaching my children or my child mm. a new way. You know, let me accept that, okay, yes, this is what's been going on and stuff like that, you know? Right. Like, for me now, I can blatantly say that it would be easier to actually educate a youth, a white youth, an Irish youth, than to educate an elderly person, mm. you know? Because right. like we said earlier, maybe their parents actually embed it into some youth at a young age that it is okay to be racist. Mm. It is okay mm. because blacks are there and you are there. Mm. So don't ever see yourself in that level. Mm. So treat them like this, you know? They should never be treated the same way you're treated. Of course. But the good thing is that young ones know this. Mm. And I'm glad and I'm so happy that in the day and age that we live in the, in the life and era of social media, you know, the young ones are actually starting to actually stand up and stand for themselves, basically, and not listen to their own elderly right. ones. You know, maybe some elderly ones that they still have some hatred in their, yep. their themselves and don't yeah. don't know how to change or accept change. Mm. You know, they embed this into their children. And now I notice a lot that youths don't even go for this. They don't accept this, right. and they they don't see color, basically. They all see everyone as human beings, mm. you know? And I hope the changes can continue going like that. But the other young youth that are being destroyed, those are the problems. I don't know if we can change them, but at least if we can educate their mind or their parents' mind to actually have a better future, think better, you know? Um, yeah, that's that's a deep, deep, deep one. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Again, my focus is not here to focus on how to I fix them. I know you them. mentioned that this, this, like, I, 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 I have no care in the world for that. Um, they've had enough time. We've spoken to them. It's just about us now. So mm -hmm. how are we going to help our youths? So uh, also sound a little bit <laughs> negative because I'm not. What's, uh, and when understand? we say our youth as well, we're not looking color as well. We yes, we are in a way as well, but they have white youth as well mm. that are with us on this. So they need to understand as well. So we're kind of educating the white youth as well as well as black youth as well. You know, can I can I just interject a little bit? You know, yeah, the, go on, the, the whole term where we don't see color, all of this. I, I personally I don't believe in that. There is color, you know, and because we've heard the message so much, which has stemmed not from us it stemmed from the oppressors mm. them saying they don't see color that's their way of minimizing uh this whole racism issue and we've heard it so much that we now even believe it's ourselves and we're not even joining them to say it it's all it's, it's, it's all meant to work you know mind <laughs> mind warfare i like your perspective you yeah know? i like your way of hey, look, we, we have to call it spade a spade um mm. we, we we just can't sit and try to make the other people comfortable uh whilst we ourselves are, 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 are to, to our detriments it's, mm. it's not it's not going to benefit anyone so whenever we say we don't see color <laughs> I, I was even shocked when he said it but look it's understandable it's normally the oppressing group that says it True. but we saying it's it's, it's it's not going to help us at all because there is color and we're not saying there's there's no color it means that we're admitting to what they're saying as well that it's not racism etc mm. because there is you're absolutely right thinking back at yeah. email, you know i was looking at it from a different point of view like you know like I mentioned earlier, like we want to actually educate the younger white youth as well. Mm. Apart from the, that's why I said, you know, maybe I don't see color that way because yeah. I wanted everyone, oh, I wanted yeah. the message for everyone. 100%. But bro. when I look at your perspective and your point, yeah, definitely you do have a point in the way you look at it in a way as well, you know? I just want the message for every youth. True. In a way, I want every youth to actually learn from this. But you're right, we need to educate our own as well in the True. process of whatever we're doing. Listen, I'll, I'll, you'll be surprised. Yes, we're talking about our own, but if other groups take the time to listen to this, they are going to be educated as well because some of them don't even know about these things. And like I said previously, it's 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 like second nature to them from the, the, the other oppression there that they already have this in their system. So 
you wouldn't know what you can't see. So now they're hearing about this, they're aware of it. They're going to be actively aware and they're going to take steps themselves to, to move forward. I think it makes sense that way. Yeah. yeah and true. that perfectly leads into the fourth system of oppression, which is internalized oppression. So what? Internalized oppression. Internalized, internalized oppression. oppression. Okay. Can you break this down for us, please? Oh, I will. I will. <laughs> um, I literally have here written, this is the most unfortunate part of oppression. What? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> It is the most unfortunate part of oppression. Why? Because just like uh, fire to ignite and keep burning, mm. you need three key ingredients. It requires three things. Oxygen, fuel, and heat. So okay. for this system of oppression to, to, to work, um, uh, if it lacks any of those three things, mm. or if it lacks any of those uh, important uh, parts, mm. it's not going to work. So the fourth way of oppression uh, that these very groups have uh, is that uh, they internalize the ideology of inferiority. Oh. I'll say that again. Oh. So the oppressed people internalize the ideology of inferiority because they see it reflected in institutions, basically uh, experiencing disrespect interpersonally from their oppressors on a daily basis to the point where they eventually come to internalize the negative messages about themselves. So right from birth, literally, we've been born into a system uh, that you know has uh, been conceived through their genome mm -hmm. of their parents, who've suffered this abuse and transferred this kind of uh, thinking about themselves to th to their offspring. So when you think about it, we've been told all our life that you're animals, mm -hmm. you're worthless, you're inferior, you're stupid, you're abnormal. Just constantly being bomb bombarded, you know, with negative brown images, no positive uh image anywhere you go social media tv screens etc even the movies or oh, watch slave slavery movies mm. what do you think that's going to do to your head mentally um so when you have all of this uh it's no surprise that many of us who can't take this anymore starts to believe this you know and when we start to believe this this is now what we call uh stockholm syndrome Go look into into the Stockholm syndrome. I don't I don't know if you know what Stockholm syndrome is. There you go. Uh, so Stockholm syndrome because the pain of the suffering is way 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 too much that we have to find as as humans we we are naturally um, designed to look for opportunities, ways to alleviate ourselves from suffering. You know, mm -hmm. even if we see the smallest glimmer of hope, the, the the smallest light in the tunnel, we want to find, we want to 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 take advantage of that and just stop whatever suffering it is. Yeah. So. To stop your suffering, just like when a person is being abused, being captured and being abused, they start to develop this liking for their captor mm. or the person that's oppressing them. Because you feel if I like this person and I show I like this person, the person will stop treating me bad. Me or find a way to there you go. Yeah. So when you think about it, if you remember yourself back at school, um, you trying to be the class clown, that's internalized oppression, you know. Um, it's you trying to be the joke of the class, uh, be the butt of the joke. So that people will like you. like you and you don't need to do that at all um oh it's very deep it's very very deep very <laughs> deep i even have no words for this because i keep thinking back and i'm reminiscing into everything you're saying like oh yeah. my god this is very very powerful yeah. you know i've actually never even looked into racism in these directions at all the four examples you've given here today i'm a learner i have to go back and learn and just look deeply into all of this and thank you for sharing all True. this information with us wow yeah, um, I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm only glad because, like I said, uh, it's, what's, what's the information, what's it going to do if it's only within myself? Um, right, we, yes. we need to transfer knowledge, yeah. which is another issue we have as black people. We just don't transfer knowledge at all. That is why we are, if this is a, a, a racetrack, mm -hmm. we're here and other folks are all the way down there because we're continuing we're competing with each other we don't yeah. want success for each other we don't support each there other and stuff like that and we, part of supporting each other is educating each other as true, well and helping true, each other true. you know and you, you can't you can't blame you can't blame i mean you can't blame us you should blame us because at the end of the day we're not learning from our mistakes from the past and moving on you know when you look at uh caucasian people for example they transfer knowledge to with, within their offspring However, as a, as a, as a black um, person or black family, mm -hmm. you know, the mentality coming from Africa again is you want to be a man, you need to go out into the streets, to go and learn to, to, the, to, the, to the jungle, to go and kill that lion. Mm. If, you don't, if you come back to the, to the village without the lion, you're not a man. <laughs> Whereas the Caucasian folks, they will take their, their offspring, they'll take their son into that lion with them. 
mm. using information that they've been passed from generations mm -hmm. to teach their son, which will mitigate a lot of things. It will cut down five years worth of uh, trial and error. Mm -hmm. Son, ah, oh, we're in the jungle now. Oh, watch this. Watch this this grass. If you step on it, it's going to injure you or it's going to send mm -hmm. some poison into your leg. And when you do that, it's going to make your, your journey, your crusade very difficult because you're going to be limping on one leg. Oh, watch that stick. You see the way it's broken. Mm -hmm. That means that animal went that direction. Watch that river. See the way it's flowing. It's just knowledge like that being passed on. It just uh, it reduces the time for you to go to the jungle yourself. Spend the first one week mm -hmm. sitting down, dying with a broken leg, with a but because of that transfer of information that we're not doing, we're literally doing the whole cycle all over again, all over again, all over again. And we're literally going nowhere. We're literally going back while they're going forward. Going forward, if that makes any sense. It yeah. totally makes sense. And I yeah. think this will lead to our next topic when I invite you here next time again okay. to actually talk about, you know, um, how this has affected us mentally, how this has affected our youth mentally, how our parents have been ignorant to our youth as well, and like you said, you know, a father will show a son, you know, bringing into the jungle all the examples that you've given there. How do we do this as Africans in Ireland today to our kids? Yep. You know, how are our kids being affected by their parents not teaching them, not educating them, ignorance, basically. Mm. Like you said, we, co we come from Africa here and a lot of African parents here are all about their success in Africa True. and not their success in Ireland. True. How is this affecting those youths that yep. are being left alone? So next time we invite you here, we want to go deep into this type of conversation and uh, talk about their mental health. And I'm more than happy to come down to speak more about this, more about um, the other issues that we're going through as Africans, black mm -hmm. people within the country. Yeah, um, yeah. It's, it's, it's definitely going to be a pleasure. And um, mm -hmm. of course, what's driving me is the knowledge that we're going to be liberating ourselves by mm -hmm. sharing all this information. Easy and thank you. Thank you really for even coming up to share the information today and educating us today. I've certainly learned from everything you've shared with us here today. And I'm sure there'll be many more people that will be coming up, you know, you know, like yourself to actually learn from you as well, you know? Or is this, do you still have more on this um, as well? Just a little bit more information. I'm going to push through it because I know we're stuck for time. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm, that's fine. I'm a Please. very believe, big believer of keeping it short and yeah. simple so that... I am so sorry because I thought that was the last example. Uh, you did, so no, please go ahead. No, no, not at all. Basically, the topics I want to go into is um, just uh, the key areas used to identify how oppressors co-construct oppression internally. Oh. Uh, and I think this is very important to understand what's going on in their mind mm -hmm. that is making them behave the way they're behaving. Mm -hmm. And uh, just on still whilst we're on the topic of uh, interpersonal oppression, which is one that's affecting us, yeah. um, what, what, what it's, actually, it's actually doing to ourselves is when you see black people fighting each other, it is a result of internalized oppression. Because you believe so much mm -hmm. about all these negative things about yourself, you feel you're worthless, mm -hmm. that you start to take this message and you, you, you want to kind of explode somewhere, you explode on your own people. You mm -hmm. explode on yourself and you explode on your own people. Uh, and it, it's, it's mental, you know, it's mental because we don't know how we've been mentally affected uh, as a people. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so bad that we, that, that we need to break the cycle, uh, first by educating ourselves, educating others and uh, actively recognize and recognize it and reverse it so that we go back to our original greatness you know and when i say our original greatness i'm talking about seeing yourself as a god again i know this it's uh, counterintuitive to some of you it's it goes against your grain you don't want to hear that you're a god but um the reality is first i'm not religious um you need to see yourself as a god you know, okay. you need to be in control of your life, your own decision making. Everything. True. If you're God, you know you're controlling. This. The way you see yourself is the way you're going to act. Is the way people are going to treat you. If mm -hmm. you don't, if you don't feel you're a God, if you don't feel there's godliness, actually, you know, God being a God is it's 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 there's a limit to that. Mm -hmm. You're beyond the God. You know, you're 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 something that is greater. You know, even our women, we're we're we're, we're, we're built of greatness. Mm -hmm. So when you see yourself as that you will start to treat yourself better. You will start to expect better from other people mm. and people will start to treat you better. Mm. Until we see ourselves as God. Yeah. Well, yeah. Be... So, um, to go into this quickly, mm -hmm. um, the four key areas used to identify how oppressors co-construct oppression internally. Mm. Patterns of abuse, that's one. Two is social justification. Mm. Three is secrecy. And mm -hmm. four is internal distress. 
the first one pattern of abuse uh, is just saying systems of oppression are created by a series of acts of abuse which uh, establish and maintain the ideals of superiority mm. so what we're saying is racism is not created by a single redlining but by years of lynching and discrimination laws and unfair labor practices so that's why the system of oppression is very important to them mm. so now the second one social justification mm -hmm. means that these acts are justified by the oppressing group in the oppressing culture as being ways to maintain the appropriate social order mm. example the bible says that there shall be slaves and that they shall come from the descendants of abraham's servant girl the third one is secrecy Nevertheless, these specific acts of abuse themselves are hidden in some sense from the public view. They are not to be witnessed. That's why you have the, the Ku Klux Klan, uh, where they, they wear hoods. You have them having meetings that is not in the public. They keep the, this, it's, it's an art of war, and we need to understand this. And then number four, internal distress. Uh, the conflicts that appear to be between the oppressor and the oppressed are actually conflicts that are inferior to the oppressor. Mm. I'll say that again. There are conflicts that are inferior to the oppressor, but acted out in relation to the oppressed. And to, to help you understand this, I'll give you an example. Anti-Semitism in Nazi Germany was not about the behavior of Jews, but about the anxiety of the Aryans who couldn't tolerate the humiliation of the world war. So mm. these systems are not simply the construction of those at the top. They are, as you said yourself, they are from parents who teach their sons the lessons of patriarchy. Mm -hmm. Uh, those who have a little look down on those with less mm -hmm. and those uh, who have the whole system uh, see to conspire to keep the oppression going. Mm. At every level, there are those who give themselves the right to be better than someone else. And we, we witness this every single day. Mm. And um, a good example that you see for this, there is uh, the likes of them talking about if they, if, for example, if the men lose their job, Mm -hmm. from some social dilemma the pandemic mm -hmm. and then there's a corner shop that is owned by an asian group he owns a job they don't have a job they go in and they go burn the, 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 the shop down shop there, because right. he's taking all our jobs he's taking all our money he's taking all our women he's taking they're taking all our, our our this so it's it's an issue that is an internal distress within them mm. that they're playing out to you so Again, it's very important to understand this. Like, why do people do certain things? You need to understand what's going on within themselves because everyone has a problem for their, their, their reaction that, that they make. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm, I'm not sure if, if this I makes, it, it makes a, a, lot sense. Of, a, lot, a lot of sense mm -hmm. yourself. So, um, yeah, um, mm -hmm. remember... And I've seen cases where this have happened in Ireland many, 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 many times, you know, where foreign businesses are being destroyed because they think that coming over from a different country to take their job and their women, you're absolutely right. And the way you put it, you put it in the perfect example where the, most people can actually understand and see themselves. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's 100% true. Um, so mm -hmm. to effectively end and dismantle oppression, uh, we have to understand the factors which maintain the systems themselves mm -hmm. and address the things that we do to support uh, the maintenance of those systems because we do support those systems. Uh, mm -hmm. We just don't know about it. Uh, Non-cooperation with systems of oppression is, going, is, is only going to happen if we make a conscious effort to identify uh, in our own lives how oppression is constructed, then justified, and to work to disconstruct dis dis uh, this in our own choices. Uh, so remember, you're a god. Um, it doesn't mean any other group or people are below you uh, or any lesser. It just means you are now seeing yourself as valuable, worthy, and majestic as you should be. Super. Yeah. Wow. There you go. Fantastic. There you go. Wow. 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 Fantastic. Thank you very, very, very much. And I just wish that regardless of everything we've discussed here today and all that, we both want a solution. Oh, yeah. We both know a simple solution that can even start from somewhere. <laughs> but do we think anyone can make the change? Like, okay, I understand you're here today to educate our own people and then other people can learn from this discussion as well. But think of it. Coronavirus came just for example. I don't even know why I'm using this as an example. Only came 2020. Less than one year, they found a vaccine for it mm -hmm. because they want to resolve that issue. You know, it's like cancer has been there for many, many, many years. They've never ever been able to find a cure. Sure. It's the same thing as racism. Mm -hmm. There is a cure for racism when it threatens all. Just don't want to take it when it threatens all. Like yeah. you said earlier, in one of the examples you gave at the beginning of this call, you know, one in four men in Af no, four in five men is it, or one in four men? 
then you said that the African that are maybe ending up in jail or being locked. Oh and stuff yes, like this. yes, uh, yeah. one in four uh, African Americans. One in four African Americans yeah. and stuff like that. You know, I don't know how we can translate this in Europe or in Ireland and stuff like this. But one thing where I'm actually trying to get basically is if we can have a common simple law mm. for racism, mm. basically for hate crime, anyone that does anything whether you're black white or any color or whatever you are if you do anything racist or racism mm. it should be something like killing somebody yeah it, sh it should be taking some something like maybe robbing a bank so they take it very serious that if they start locking a lot of racist people up yeah. over time over years things will change it's the same thing in football now look at the way the big 16 are trying to create a separate team yeah, yeah. they are able to do that and the whole country were in england were able to actually come together and stop that from happening we've been saying no to racism in yeah, football yeah. for how many years you see the, the match that was even played <laughs> only yesterday alone yeah. you know look at that when they went for the knee first time mm. that the fans were allowed into the stadium yeah. because they saw the players going on their knee to stand up for racism mm. the whole crowd were actually booing them for doing that Incredible. not accepting it i didn't you see, see that i didn't see didn't that see but i'm not surprised <laughs> you know? at all so um, that's what i'm just thinking there's only one way to resolve this mm. Even if you're gonna have to build many, many, many more prisons, mm. we do know if they do criminalize this, many white people will be going to jail. Mm. Like uncountable, unbelievable white people will be going to jail because you count, you catch a message on Twitter mm. of somebody being racist straight away. Oh, no question, locked up six months, one year. Simple as that. That's mm. the repercussion. Yeah. If we start doing this, what do you think would happen in five years' time? Um, I'm I'm so happy you brought that point up, you know, because it just I don't know how long this is gonna be, but uh, <laughs> it's not going to happen. Yeah. We're just saying it anyway. It's not gonna happen. Like, it, let's, I don't let's, think it's gonna let's, happen. Let's 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 be let's be frank. Let's be clear. Uh, uh, be clear. If these people wanted to solve it, it would have been resolved already. Let's look at the abortion crisis in in the country. Mm -hmm. They brought up laws, and what happened? They brought up new new laws to to allow abortion because the whole the whole population cared about it. What else did they do? Um, LGBT, just different things. Yeah, LGBT marriage is legalized because it affects a lot of people within their society. However, right. when you have when you talk about this, it doesn't affect at least ninety eight percent of the people in this society. Racism doesn't affect them because they are white. There you go. So, so why would they want to make any change? It's not your. It's 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 not their duty to to alleviate to to uh to end racism you know mm -hmm. we've, we've done that for a long time we need to start looking inwards we need to start looking inwards at ourselves we need to start having the having those truthful conversations with ourselves because there are other groups who have been oppressed over time mm -hmm. you know and look if you look at them uh how they are right now you see how they're 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 they're, they're prospering they're, they're not wallowing within themselves and beating up whatever saying ah oh, we're, we're going through this the jews uh the the arabs who are the middle east uh what other groups we know other groups that have been oppressed but they are doing very very well now because yeah. they've sat down they've made plans they've made uh, they've made 10 year 15 year 50 year uh, plans broken down to 20 year to 10 year to five years to two years to one year plans to half a year plans or quarterly plans to weekly plans to daily plans on how they're going to get to a certain stage mm -hmm. whereas we're still here discussing it <laughs> doing nothing about it and we, what what do we expect we're, we're going to get nothing out of it they're, exactly. they're literally laughing at us because they're using mental warfare against us and it is working very very well when you see us fight when you see us do this not working together it's all mental warfare it's, it's, it's the art of war and if you don't understand how it's playing if you don't recognize it you're never going to be able to deal with it 100%. There's a lot more. Um, believe me, there's, there's a lot more, even from what you said. <laughs> but uh, we're going to have to leave it there for today. We don't want to bore our audience as well. Yeah. Like we promised on CSI, our videos shouldn't be long, no longer than 40 minutes. <laughs> so I think we're out of time already for this session here. We will be back again next week as well, with Tunde again, to discuss another topic. And like we said, the mental health among our youths in Ireland today, I believe that will be the next topic we're going to be sitting down in the studio to actually discuss next time again so i think that's it from us today or is there any more comment from you the last thing i'm going to say is no uh remember don't 
discuss your oppression with your oppressors <laughs> never try to do that because you're just going to be laughed at internally within themselves mm. social media stop commenting you know even you alone reading the stuff is mental stress because they are going it's it's a safe haven for them they are going to spew out all the hate that they want to mm -hmm. you spend time commenting going back and forth it's going to do nothing because at the end of the day two bulls at each other it's not going to do anything except for create more animosity more mm -hmm. hate more anger more this soft answer kills the hardest the hardest heart I, I know it's counterintuitive to what we've developed and we've grown up to be especially men you know mm -hmm. you want to sh you want to show your masculinity mm -hmm. someone comes says something to you you want to attack they're not physically attacking you because then at that at that stage you're you're within your rights to yeah. self-defend to defend your family to defend your people well words it's only gonna go back and forth it's gonna do nothing for yourself but hurt you mentally and they are very aware of this and they would love to see you drained out to bits 100%. we 100%. believe we don't we don't go through mental stress we go through mental stress you will you'll will burn the hell out so stay away from arguing with them it's, it's, and that's it's one thing that's common within the black society in ireland yeah. we don't believe in mental health and mental stress yeah. that's another topic though yeah but that's that's, that's another, a reality we'll, though we'll be back for that do we we'll even back. know what mental health is that's think, one question we should be asking some of our black elders I, today I don't, I don't think we do <laughs> you know do. and i think we need to educate ourselves yeah. we need to talk more and emphasize on this topic a lot Definitely. because we need even us being you know, like we said, the leaders of today and tomorrow and help our youth to be yeah. the leaders. You know, we are the leaders of tomorrow. Our own leaders, our own parents. Yeah. And I can be boldly even say this here. My father don't even know what mental health is. I, 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 I'll <laughs> tell you the same as well. My, my father makes it, he will tell you he doesn't have any issues. And I just look at him like, mate, <laughs> you're, not, you're, not, you're not a superhero. You're, you're a human. No, you're a god, but still remember that <laughs> you need to look after yourself. Uh, and it was it's those kind of doctrines, those kind of teachings growing up that we absorb as children ourselves, mm -hmm. and we take into our adulthood uh, years, and we, mm -hmm. we start to operate in that in that way. It's very very bad. That's you know? why we have to change yeah. it. That's why you and I are here to actually change this for what other youth as well. Because 100%. we can't go in that direction at all. True. You know. Anyway, that's it for you today. And is there any more, or that's it from your side? That's that's no. all. That's we really 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 appreciate now, yeah. you coming here today. It's been a very very great you know meeting today. Everything you've shared with us here today is really amazing. I've oh. learned so much from you today and your research. And thank you for sharing all this information. Thank you. And you see as me. well. Um, is there any way if anyone wants to contact you on social media, <laughs> do you want to share any information or you like to just stay private as you are? Uh, I'm a private person. Um, but I think if you want to contact me, you, you'll be able to find your way to contact me. Um, just one thing we need to remember as well is in, in, in war, your leaders need to be hidden. Um, your leaders do not need to be out there in the open because when the enemy strikes the leader, it will literally destabilize uh the whole the whole efforts um so to be honest if i if i if i could have my way i would have had a balaclava on i would have <laughs> my mask my shades even on the balaclava just so you wouldn't know who i am <laughs> but as long as i'm giving you the information i'm happy with that so um hence why it's taking me this long to get on camera because i just i like to be a private person yeah. and uh yeah so if you want to contact me look for who knows me no uh, problem man thank you so much for today thank you very much. and thank you all so much for tuning in as well we will be back again next week thank you so much have a fantastic day thank you bye bye, bye. come online come online come online come online come online